Hi, this is Willie Stewart, and today we're going to talk about leading and managing by the platinum rule. See, I'm pretty certain that most of you have heard about the golden rule, which states that you should do unto others as you would like for them to do unto you. It's referred to as the ethic of reciprocity, and in life, it's a powerful rule. However, when leading and managing people, it really has to be modified. See, I like the platinum rule, which states that you should do unto others as they would do unto themselves. Basically, treat others as they would want to be treated. Okay, okay, so what does that mean? See, we're all different. We have different natural behavioral tendencies. You know, we value things in life differently. Basically, we are motivated, you know, by different things, and we have different levels of emotional intelligence. But for now, let's just stick with behavior. You see, the concept of behavior, of behavior has been around for over 100 years. It became more a more defined science with the creation of behavioral assessment tools. You know, they go back to the 1950s, you know, with a disc. You know, today we're, there are literally hundreds of behavioral assessments, including the DISC, the AVA, Myers-Briggs, Colby, Caliper, Harrison, Management by Strengths and others. One of the things they have in common is that they measure a person's behavioral strengths in typically four competencies or dimensions. Basically dominance, influence, which is sociability, patience or steadiness, and compliance. See, we all have a certain amount of each, but are stronger in typically one or sometimes two of them. So what does this have to do with the platinum rule? Well, if you knew someone's natural behavioral tendencies, basically you knew their behavioral assessment results, it would then be so much better if you managed, led, or communicated with that person the way that they would want you to communicate with them. You know, for example, if the person had a high level of patience, and is someone looking for detailed information, you know, and explanations, and you didn't have any patience yourself, how would they feel if you gave them minimum explanation and basically didn't take the time to explain what you or the company needed? You know, they will feel as though you didn't care for them. But the opposite is also true. If you gave way too much detail or information to someone with little patience, uh, that, you know, all they're looking for is the bottom line, right? They'll go, they'll go crazy. See, this is also true when you deal with a dominant person, a very social person or a very independent person. So the art of managing is then is to adapt our style so that we can get more clarity when we lead others. Obviously, this works on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You know, as in a group setting, the behavioral styles of the team will probably vary across the board. If you get good at this, you can use this when making presentations, when selling, heck, even when dealing with your own kids and family. Just look for the cues early on you'll be able to tell whether the individual is highly social or not, or whether the person is looking for lots of detailed information, or they're just looking for the bottom line. You see, failing to do this can be very costly. It just makes sense.